as the Buddha to be was sitting under the Bodhi tree with a mind which was pliable, under control through the powers that he has gained in deep concentration, he observed the nature. He saw that there is birth, old age, sickness, death. There is despair, lamentation, not getting what we want, being bound to that what we don't want, having our wishes unfulfilled, and being bound to this body, feelings, perceptions, intentions and consciousness, or as we would say the so-called five aggregates of being. He has seen that this suffering is caused, is brought about by craving. <coughs> craving for sensual pleasures, craving for existence and craving for non-existence. So today I would like to share with you the meaning of this word, craving. Craving in Pali Tanha actually means thirst. When you want to drink water because you're thirsty, you can see thirst. You really, really want. You really, really must. So this is thirst, this is craving. And the Buddha explains that craving for sensual pleasures, craving for existence, and craving for non-existence, or literally thirst for sensual pleasures, thirst for existence, and thirst for non-existence, is the cause of suffering. So the idea is that we get rid of this thirst. <coughs> there is thirst which is which arises through delusion and there is thirst which is not dependent on delusion. So what is the thirst which arises through delusion? That's the thirst, that's the craving where the cause is not understanding impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and not, not self in this world. So if somebody thinks, wow, I have this beautiful body, I need to make it even more beautiful, or I need to get uh, fantastic tastes, fantastic smells, fantastic contacts, fantastic views, fantastic sounds. I need them without those fantastic views and sounds and smells and tastes and contacts and thoughts. It would not be good to live. So I must have them. I really, really must have them. So then they seek these fantastic sensual pleasures and that's where they suffer. Either they cannot get them or they cannot get those that they want or they get them but they are impermanent, they get lost or they get them but somebody steals them or they get them but after some time they have to relinquish them either because they were borrowed or because the person is old, sick or dead. So these are kinds of thirst which are based on delusion. The idea that I must have is delusion. I don't have to anything. There is nobody 
who would have to have something. It's just an illusion that I must have something. I will have what I have. So I can try, try and try, and then maybe I will get something or not. But it doesn't mean that I must have it. What is this I that must have it? Is it this hair or this body hair or the skin or the flesh or the bones or the bone marrow? What is it from this I that must have it? Or is it the feelings that must have it? Or the perceptions or the intentions or the or the consciousness. If we look at this being, at this body and mind, we will see that ultimately there is nobody who would be craving and nothing to be craved for. Because again, there is nobody who would be craving. But also anything that we would be craving for is also impermanent. It's all only dependent on our perception. So a girl may be craving for flowers because she thinks, wow, these flowers, they're the symbol of my beauty, they're the symbol of my youth. But another girl is angry when she sees flowers because it happened to her that a man gave her flowers, but then he was not faithful to her. Then she remembers how those flowers were just deceitful and not true. So, different people perceive different sensual pleasures in different ways, and therefore it's not possible to say that ultimately I must have something, or I must not have something, because I is not there, and that something is not there either. So the thirst, which is based on delusion, is based on this idea of self that I must have or I must not have. But then there is thirst which is not based on delusion. For example, the need to eat so that this body is healthy and supportive of oneself and one's society. Or the need to take rest so that there is enough energy to support one's society and oneself. Or the need to meditate, the need to be in peace, the need to be happy. All those are based not on delusion. So we need to use wisdom when we want something. If we want to create only that thirst which doesn't cause suffering, only that thirst which cause independence from thirst, then we need to wisely reflect on whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we think about. In fact, thirst can lead to another thirst, but the thirst which is not based on delusion can free us from thirst. As Venerable Ananda explained, we can use thirst for making of this body, but we can also use thirst to get free from this body. You can think of it like a jujitsu of Dhamma. You can use the needs of this body to get free from this body, such as by eating only as much as you need to be healthy and to meditate and thereby observe the reality of the body and mind and get free from attachment to them, which would then lead to enlightenment and freedom from rebirth. You can also make use of this body again to meditate. You can make use of this mind again to meditate and observe the reality as it is, to detach, to know, to realize. So this way we can use thirst to get free from thirst. So this way the Buddha has taught the Dhamma as that there is suffering, 
Suffering is caused by thirst. By getting free from thirst, we can get free from suffering.